sir. Jamie is was next. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to, I, I want to one certainly not step on the, the actual statute, but just in terms of the mission of the agency, um, I, I do want to read that just very quickly. Um, and I think ultimately these we've got lots of time for more information and effort, but it's our responsibility to preserve, conserve, manage, protect, and enhance the fish and wildlife of the state and their habitat habitats, use, benefit, and enjoyment of citizens of Tennessee and our visitors. And so these aren't necessarily conflicting responsibilities, but that ultimately is our mission and our job is to fulfill the mission of this agency for the citizens of this state. Don't conflict at all. Commissioner, Commissioner Rice, did you have something you want to say? Do the closed waters help you or hurt you? Personally, uh, they hurt me because I can't fish them, but uh, they help us and should be helping us in this discussion and this debate we're having now is that's why you have those closed waters is to protect that paddlefish resource. I'd love to go get them and, and catch them, and, but I also understand that not being able to do that and this being the most radical form of management as a no-go zone that from a, from a statewide ticket when you take the most radical and the most drastic and you start there when, and we agree with both of them to manage the paddlefish fishery, then on top of that you have a size and a season. You can micromanage this down to where we're out of business and we can't comply with that statute. You know, it's reasonable rules and regulations to promote our business. To shorten my season a week would cut 20% of my, what I bought last year. I bought 20% of my product in the last week. Mike bought, I think, 50% of his product in the last two weeks. So shorten the season by a week, and you've passed a, a proclamation that I consider unreasonable, that I'm sure Bobby considers extremely reasonable, but you're, in, you're not in compliance, as far as I see it, with the Tennessee state law that says pass something that you know, promotes my business, not something that hurts it. Chickamauga Lake. Rest assured, sir, none of us want to pass a law that puts you out of business any more than we would want one passed that puts us out of business. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. If I, Mr. Stroud. I'll take 30 seconds here. It, it seems like we've been for a while now, we've, we've been talking about and, and getting around things that either has been voted on or re rules and regulations, those kind of things, and I get it. I mean, I, you know, I'm in a business that that is in terrible trouble right now because of people that don't act right. And that's what I was talking about a while ago. But let me, here's to me a positive. We're, we're talking about, I mean, Bobby has presented us with things that the majority of the stuff you agree on, right? I mean, you, you guys feel good about that. <clears throat> and there's only a few things, from what I understand, that there's a, there's a problem with, all right? We're, okay, so so uh, what Commissioner Cannon was talking about is you know getting the facts and stuff and scientifically he was asking about that. I know you can to a point, but what helps me and I'm talking personal. What helps me right now is that you are experts and you are professionals at what you do. It's not about science. It's about going out there and and running the nets, right? Correct. That does help us us uh, to understand that. And when we do see what Bobby has worked so hard on and what the, what the states work so hard on, it is to us, to me, you know, I get it from that side of it and I'm also hearing it from you. Now, I say all that to say this, <clears throat> there should be a process that seems to work a little bit from time to time and that is, you know what, you pick your battles and work on those and we, you can, I guarantee you that if anybody were to talk here about what their their uh, process and their intentions, it is absolutely to do the right thing for everybody, with the with the wildlife coming first. So, all that being said, when he was talking about getting us facts, it would help me a great deal. That that it's a combination of the stuff that you've, the stuff, the facts that you have gathered, and the experiences that you have that sort of where the rubber meets the road. I, I, I get that. 
I understand that. And when you talk about things that you have to do and experiences that you have and those kind of things, as you get us this information, I, lo I would like to have that also. You know, you're, you, Alan, you, you, I mean, you're in a business that's, that's tough. Well, it's tough for everybody right now, but, but if we can make it better for you and compromise in a good way, and we still keep what we really need to do and what we're charged with on our side of this thing, then I think we can get pretty close to what we're talking about and, and just continue the process of compromise and, and hearing what you need and, and also you guys hearing what we have to do. Anyway, that's... Is there, is there anybody that wouldn't want me to send or forward this information, scan it through the computer, send it to you by email? Personally, I'd like to have that. Send it to all of us. Oh, yeah. that, well, that was kind of, yeah, is anybody don't want it? That would, I thought but, that would make but, it but, quicker. But if, I may, if I may, just 10 more seconds. You know, it, 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 I gripe about my business, and I, and I wish I was smart enough to come up with a solution. If you're smart enough to, to come up with, if you feel like you have a solution that would work for everybody, put it in there. Here's my suggestion. Not just here's what you're doing and what you're not doing, but, hey, guys, here's, here's a thought. I understand. Okay. I think, you know, put it in writing succinctly, not briefcases full. But if you're in agreement, then show that agreement. All of you signed it or something. Because we don't know, do, do, does everyone agree with Mr. Fine? We don't know that. But if, but if that's the case, let us know that in what you send us. Can you do that? I think I'll try to get with Ricky, too, since he's the chairman of the CFAC committee and then they can kind of spread it out to all the fishermen and get that done just like you asked so that you can get an idea of what the fishermen themselves want to. And then I'll probably really bother Mr. Cannon and Mr. Watson a little extra since they're both out there near me. So y'all might actually get good requests. I'd like to come and talk with you once I gather some of this up and explain it to you in person. Chairman, well, come out, Mr. Chairman, one, one other thing. If I, I'll shut up. Uh, Frank's talking about the fishery thing. I don't understand that. Is it in your presentation or in your information? Can I, would you mind addressing that? I don't have no His idea. His hatchery and get the information from him? Well, he, yeah, no, I'm just saying, I, I don't understand. You have a fish, you have a, a way of, you have a fishery, you said. Yes, sir. So, I own, I own a hatchery. Well, I, I'm, I, that's okay. Here's what I want to do. Instead of us getting into it today, if you don't mind, I'd like to just, in your present, it's not a presentation, in your information. Correct. Can you include that too? Because I, I don't understand. I'll get, it, I'll get Bobby, Mr. Hale to get it to me. Thank you. Uh, did you have a question? Yeah, don't question don't right. leave out. He was one of the, he's been the, 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 the big thing here is enforcement of the regulations. The 38 inch, all of that's meaningless unless we can enforce it. And we can't see a fisherman clean his nets and go out half a mile out in the lake and so we want to screen it at the boat ramp so if that's not suitable which i understand is not what else can we do to make sure that this that what we want to do to protect the paddlefish is enforceable okay we'll, we'll now talk you know that's you need to talk them up to the fishermen to see what what else can you do that will satisfy our officers so they can be sure that you're not catching a, a, a 32 inch fish cutting it taking the eggs and throwing that fish away out in the middle of the lake and, and i don't the know there's line. an exact answer to that but it's sort of mr ripley's a lawyer you can't come up here and everybody that was speeding on the way to this meeting i'm going to take your car keys away from you you know people are either going to follow the law or they're going to break the law and you you know it's kind of like a gate when you put it up you keep honest people honest you know and you can't actually come up with a way that somebody crooked isn't going to beat it you know, it's just, if you're a crook, you're a crook. But we have to no, but the highway patrolman got radar. <laughs> and they can catch you if you're speeding at some, at some point. Well, now there's no way to enforce this right now. So, so we need another suggestion or something, if you can, to help with that. And it may be that patrolling yourselves, like Ricky said, might be part of the answer. I don't know, but that's just don't leave I think I out. think we could talk to, to Mr. Couch, and if you see some of the equipment that these guys have, you know, they can listen to a conversation in our boat from, I've been told, a mile away. You know, they have, they have all sorts of great devices, night vision devices. I mean, they know what we're doing. 
Most of the time when I see an officer or if he comes to check me, he knows what I'm doing. He knew what I did yesterday and he knows what I'm doing today. So I don't know. First off, I don't believe that's that big a problem. I think that's, that's something that's being manufactured because if you could stretch a fish, hell, if you make it 38 inches, we'll stretch him to 39 if you're going to do it. So, who, who would be motivated to, to manufacture that as a problem? I, I heard what, you ask. They've never, they've never. What is the motivation? I, I can assure you that I think every commissioner here is genuinely concerned about helping the resource and in turn helping you and following right. the, the requirements of the statute. But what I just heard you say is that things are being fabricated. That's the way I took it. Being fabricate, okay. fabricated to serve somebody's end. And I don't know what the motivation would be for that. What To make you think about making me leave those eggs in that fish. But why? Because you believe that somebody is going to cut those eggs out of that little fish and sink him. Okay. Can we... Uh, can, I know there's some other people that want to, these guys have been holding their hands up for a while. Can, I, can we recognize them? Would you step forward, please? My name is Dale Robertson. I'm a commercial fisherman. And for this information gathering, I'd like to know where the data will be, the water sample, water temperature data will be taken on Kentucky Lake. I'll have to ask Bobby that. I don't remember where that data was taken. That slide is uh, probably eight, seven years old or something like that. But it was taken, it was taken from the same place every time, so it's consistent. It's not like they took it from one end to the other, but they consistent. And they had to get a, a reading somewhere in the lake. Recognize there's probably going to be a little difference one end of the lake to the other. I don't think it'll change a whole lot. Uh, they, and they may go down, I don't know if it's a surface or, or down farther, but. The, the reason I asked where it was taken at was uh, when all this patrol report come out, they had to go all the way to Vicksburg, Mississippi, on Mississippi River to get the temperatures to jive with the report. You know, that's, I'd like to know where the water sample's taken, just truth in full disclosure, you know, you don't. Okay, so, sir, thank you. Somewhere on Kentucky Lake. Did you, did you, <laughs> did you have a presentation? North end or south end. <laughs> Yes, I'm Benson Kinsey. I'm from Jasper, Tennessee. I'm a commercial fisherman. Um, I guess one question about all this paddlefish stuff, uh, is there any way that we could meet with the fisheries committee, the CFAC, because I'm a member of the CFAC, is there any way that we could get together and sit down and maybe talk about some of these issues with the whole, you know, the whole uh, fisheries committee? Well, I'm, I'm sure we can work that out. Obviously, we're from all across the state, and we'd have to be done at at a time when we're right, I, under, I understand that, but I, I'm so yeah, what I, I could kind do. of think that's what we're doing now. But right, trying to understand what that you would bring differently, just more time or well, what? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, more time because they have. I mean, they've spent months gathering up all this information, and we got what a month before the y'all vote on it. So I guess well, but that's that's my okay. Uh, but I think when did the information go out of what the proposal was? Maybe today. Okay, that's, you, see, you understand the way it works, this is when yes. we get it too. Right. You understand? So that's when we get it. So um, I'm gonna, if you're asking are we, can we meet separately, we'll meet as a body just like yes. we do. We can't two right. or three of us talk and stuff like right. that. Right, okay. Law. We can't do that. Okay, and my, my, next, my next concern is about, uh, I'm going to go way off subject here, about a, a size increase on a catfish. Um, you know, we would like, most of the commercial fishermen, you know, they would like to see an increase of the size. You know, it's, we are only allowed to keep one a day over 34 inches. And we'd like to see an increase in the size of catfish to maybe 38 inches. And still keep one a day over 38 inches. And I'm just wondering. So I know we've talked about that in the past. Can well, you like to answer that question? Yeah, let me address that. We, we did discuss that at our biologist meeting this past May. And after a considerable amount of discussion about it, uh, it was brought up that Tennessee Tech is in, right in the middle of doing a, a research project on catfish uh, in Tennessee. They're looking at um, Kentucky Lake, 
Chickamauga, and then uh, an unfished commercially lake, which is Fort Loudon. And they're going to look at some population parameters. They're going to come back with some recommendations to us. But we didn't want to change a regulation now that might influence or impact the results of their study right in the middle of their study. So I don't know if we'll have it this time next year. I'm hoping that we might have some preliminary results that might allow us to go forward with it. But but we, we decided not to bring that up this year. But and next year, maybe for sure the year after. OK, is yes, there? Okay, we have all this scientific stuff on this spoonbill, but is there anything that y'all have that says we even need a size limit on catfish or why we can't go up to 38 inches? Do y'all have anything? Well, that's what we're working on. That's what okay, the research process is. I understand, I understand that, yeah. but before there was no, there was no uh, size limit, and all of a sudden there was. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I was in college when I, this was passed, so this is all new to me with a you know, about the size limit on catfish and stuff, or why, how it got to be, I guess, is what I'm asking. Where the number, magic number 34 inches come from, how come it couldn't be 38? I'd or? like to answer that since I was involved in it. The, 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 the catfish, the, the big catfish protection came from the fact that commercial fishermen were catching the, cat, the big catfish in Tennessee and taking them to Ohio and selling them to Pay Lakes. That fish is, the sport fishermen in Tennessee want to catch that fish and release it and catch it again. The sport fish, catfish sport fishing is, is on the increase in popularity. Those guys buy licenses. That fish is worth a hundred times to, to this state more than it is to a pay lake in Ohio. So I would rather for it to, to be smaller. I would support a, a, an increase in the size of 36 inches, but nothing over that. But that, that, hadn't, that hadn't been suitable. So that's why there's a limit on catfish is because, because there were fishermen taking them and selling them in other places. And the sport fishermen like it. And you can read it in magazines and, 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 and the protection we've got and how the, how the sizes, if you talk to the, to the sport fishermen, how the size of the fish have increased in all of Tennessee's waters. Did you have anything else, sir? Uh, yes. Um, okay. So again, so just because sport fishermen want it, there has to be a size a size limit on catfish, even though there's no scientific or biological reason for it. That's what That's the study that uh, Bobby was referring to. That am I correct? And that we'll try to find that out. But you know, we have we have participants in our resources across the state. There's thousands and thousands of people that are fishing with hook and line that we're also responsible for. And so I'm just saying that's why we're doing the study to determine just what we feel like the catfish uh, can uh, bear. So that's, that's the answer we have. Right okay, now. well, we've, we've also been asking for this for the past three or four years, and we get the same response every year that it's going to get put off another year. And I mean, I'm just, I'm just wondering how come it keeps getting put off. You know, it keeps getting pushed back every year but I mean I understand you're concerned about these I don't like the live fish going up to Ohio either the big fish I don't but I, that's not what I do I mean we actually catch them for food I mean they sell us you know a 17 pound fish is about as large as a 34 inch fish is you know that's not a big fish considering catfish get you know 80 90 100 pounds All right. anybody else have any else other questions for him Comments? Did you have anything else? No, I guess not. Well, sir, we're ready. To, we're listening to you. I just wait. What else do you have to add? I mean, I just, I would, you know, it would just be nice to have something, you know, from, you know, y'all, you know, other than sport fishermen want it is the reason why I lose money every day having to release catfish. You know, that, that does affect my business. I'm sure it's to protect the resource, and we're awaiting the study that, that Bobby's talking about. Okay. All right. Is that correct? Thank you. It's going to be this year. Hope, I don't know when it, it. It could be this time next year, but but it might be a little bit longer. But we'll hopefully, we have some preliminary results by then. Thank you. All right. Thank Is there anybody else that hasn't spoken has got something to add to anything different? Yes, sir. I I would like to address you one more time. I, I think your wife there may have held her hand up first. You won't oh. let her go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she, believe it or not, sometime 
She listens to me. <laughs> no, what we've covered here today, gentlemen, is a long thing that Mr. Wilson and I are very educated in. My reason of saying what I do, try to be intelligent. After 50 years, I'm ready to go home. And I've seen a lot, and I know what will work and what won't. It'd be detrimental if we have to take these fishermen to catch the fish, then deliver the fish 30 miles up the river. He's got 20 egg fish in one net, he's got four. He's got 12 more nets to run, and that might take 10, 15 hours. I'm not trying to cut you off, but we've got that. We understand right. y'all are very much against that. In the, in so the time, we're looking for something new that y'all might want to present, but we understand y'all are very much against that. Right. We, we are very much, I am as a buyer, very much again that. I will work any way toward the future okay. of replenishing paddlefish if we need it, Bobby. How many million you want, save me two, and I'll hit the button. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you want to speak, ma'am? American Pearl Caviar. Uh, I was notified yesterday from some of the fishermen that just found out that this meeting was going on. Well, ma'am, well, this meeting has been announced for a long time that it would be. But going if on. you look on your rules and regulation, you don't have nothing on the paddlefish on the computer. Now, the nine committee that's on the board is not informing all the fishermen of what's going on. Uh, I do know that. Huh? We don't know till we get here all of this. Yeah, so. but that's that's true. Yeah. But some of the fishermen is not even aware of it. Another thing, we was in the business when there was no federal, no HACCP, no nothing. The fishermen could pro do a certain process and bring it into us from all over Alabama when it was open, and then it got stricter. FDA stepped in, HACCP, which is Homeland Security. Uh, we have a HACCP personnel that works with our company. What, what do you want us uh, to do? What I am, the fishermen, who agree with the 12 nets? Is that 12 nets a day that they can only fish? Answer that, Bob. Yes, it's 12 nets per licensed commercial fisherman a day. Okay, because some of my guys fishes sometimes two different locations to hunt the fish. They might put out 12, 10, 15 nets at one place, then go down the river and put out another 10, 15 nets. Yes, ma'am, but the regulation we're proposing is 12 nets. Yeah, that's what I see. Mm -hmm. And some of the fishermen I've talked to, saying they, you know, they can't make a be hunting the fish when they are putting these nets out in two or three different locations. At least two locations, say. Trying to hunt the fish. Do you want to respond to that? I, I just, uh, we're trying to reduce pressure. That's one of the things we're trying to do uh, that is one of the initial recommendations, the bycatch, things like that. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. Now you was talking about bringing the paddlefish to the bank this, to process the eggs. But getting back to that 12 fish, 12 nets per day, I don't think that's going to work. Hey, I, I, it seems to me that, that with the commercial fishing with, within a body, need mm -hmm. to, to make some dis have some discussion himself so they can come to us to see what right. we can't please everybody. Right, uh, I we're agree. We're trying to protect the resource and mm -hmm. come up with what would be best for the resource mm -hmm. for, for you. And I can't even believe the committee agreed on that. You know, the nine fishermen that is on that committee. I had to call you the other day to find out who's on that committee. Can I have, I didn't, I didn't say that the committee agreed to it. I just said that they, uh, this, that's what we proposed afterwards. Some said we should have 14, some said 10. Mm -hmm. So, and some said 15, like mm -hmm. uh, someone mentioned. So, but 12 is the number that we recommended. It's a pretty good compromise, we mm -hmm. think. Okay, because I know some of these fishermen, how many you put out, Ricky? High as 30 a day. 
Do you fish sometimes two locations no, 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 to hunt no. the fish, you know, to find the fish? Hey, hold on just a second. Let's, everybody's getting tired and we've been here for a while. Let's hold all of our conversation with the chairman. No talking back and forth in the crowd. Nobody in the okay. talking out loud. Let's hold, I mean, everybody's getting tired and getting ready to go. Okay. So let's do it the right way. We're going to do it. And I'm sure, and chairman, I'm sorry for interrupting, but we'll let a few of you wrap it up. And, and I know y'all are tired just like we are. We, we heard you, as Commissioner Ripley said, we are open-minded, I promise you we are. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna listen to y'all, and, and our agency better get ready for some phone calls too, because we, we took notes today, and we're gonna listen to what you said, and we're gonna call them, and we're gonna check a lot of it out. But we appreciate y'all, and I think that y'all have us today too, because we sit here and listen. And I've really enjoyed the dialogue today. I think hopefully we'll get somewhere with it. Ma'am, I'm sorry, you go ahead. Okay. Now, I hear that, go ahead. Okay. Uh, there's something I wanted to ask Bobby. He mentioned there was facilities on the Cumberland that agriculture department, he said, and one on Chickamauga that the fishermen could take the eggs to. But ma'am, we've already compromised to the fact that we're not going to insist y'all do that. Okay. Okay. We're going to come, the compromise right now that they that the agents presented is just come to the bank, mm -hmm. come to a boat ramp. We're not talking about those facilities anymore. Okay. Well, my HACCP personnel that works for us, he also works for the HACCP. There's one reason that we like it to be done on the boat because you bring that egg to the boat, and if it's a windy day. We're getting sand and debris. That's why we suggest the fishermen go out in the middle of the river, screen those eggs, and put them on ice. Okay. So there's no debris, there's no sand, nothing gets in those eggs. Right. Thank you. So that's all, I Thank think. You. Thank you very much. Do you have something to add new? Um, on the 12 nets, is that just for um, paddlefish purposes, not buffalo and catfish, the 12 net limit? Can you answer that, Bob? That's for all commercial fishermen. That's for buffalo fishing and catfishing as well? That, that's for all, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, do you have something to add to new to it? I've heard you warning about I mean, it. I've heard you warning about repeating. I got repeating. 420 miles to drive. I know, by. I heard you warning about repeating. I wanted to address Mr. Ripley and Ms. Woodson's comments, uh, a statement, a fresh statement. We are trying to manage part of this issue with biology, and we're trying to manage part of it not making the sport fishing community angry. Uh, they tell you that the biology says that the paddlefish are in trouble, but we're not able to fish half the state because we don't want the sport fishermen mad. So you can't manage it both ways. Miss Woodson read the uh, kind of statement of the creed of the agency, and it does say that you'll make the available resource available to the citizens. And so there's 50% of the paddlefish water that you've not made available to us because of sport fishing conflict. Don't have anything to do with the biology. So we're managing half of it one way and the other half the other. That's new, that's fresh for you. And <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, and, and, and I heard Mr. Cannon, I'm a one, two, three guy. I like it on one piece of paper. Let's narrow it down in one, two, three. So I'm gonna narrow in in real respect to you. I'm gonna narrow mine down to one. I'm not gonna send y'all a briefcase full of information. The egg screening is a train wreck deal breaker for me. The rest of it's not. It is a train wreck deal breaker. Figure out what to do if you vote that in. So I'm not gonna send you a paper. I got one, and the, and the egg screening is a train wreck. Thank you. Did you have something you want to say, Mr. Cannon? I think I understood that. <laughs> so, you got through my But thinking. I wasn't going to send you a bunch of documents. No, uh, and, I, and I appreciate that. Uh, 
No, I, I, I wanted to go back very quickly. One is I owe an apology to the commission. I probably talked too much today. I'm not even on fisheries committee, but I guess I'm going to be voting on this overall pretty soon uh, at some point in time. I heard the, uh, I want to come back to what Commissioner Ripley said, and that is the, there's comment made about insinuations or fabrications or whatnot. Uh, I want to be real clear here. If our law enforcement folks say we have a problem, until somebody gives me hard evidence otherwise, we got a problem. And so what we're asking you to do is A, believe us, and B, you've got an opportunity to have input as to what that regulation may look like for that specific issue. We're asking for your help there. Now, if we don't get your help, if you just want to say we well, don't believe that's happening, I respect that. But I promise you that we are going to deal with it up here. I'd like to hear your voice on that. Hold on, I'm not done. <laughs> I know that, but I'm not. I, we, I believe it. And I believe what Bobby is saying in there. And what we're saying in all this is we want to hear your thoughts on it. Um, and, and likewise, as Commissioner in District 2, I'm happy to hear from, from our folks in that neck of the woods. But I also want to respect the committee process as well. And those are key people that need to be communicated with because we're the rest of us commissioners are looking to them, you know, as kind of the front line in all this. So thank you. Did you want to respond? I wanted to give you a little bit of information on board. Okay, go ahead. The, That'd be the, great. And I'm sorry for interrupting you. The 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 committee brought the agency a proposal to help the problem. And that was take the paddlefish gear, make that illegal gear when paddlefish season's closed. Because part of the problem was two or three guys, two or three guys was fishing a week early before paddlefish season opened. So we wanted the gear to be illegal where a game warden can pull up and it doesn't matter if he sees a paddlefish or not. If he sees a six inch net, he knows he's got a violator. So we've, we've, we've asked, we asked for that. And that was to help correct the problem. Okay. Yes, sir. Real quick, there's 50% of the state closed, okay? In all actuality, there's over 50% because LOH, you're not fishing maybe 20 days out of these months that paddlefish is open. 20 days is all you get with the water running. So over 50% of the state is actually closed because you're not going to fish LOH, none. Right, we'll allow one more. Yes, sir. Uh, Dale Robertson again. I call your attention to the thing that's showing up there. Uh, this is pretty much the 12 net limit everybody's pretty much in agreement with. At the top it says paddlefish regulation proposals. We all agree to that. Now Bobby's saying that's going to apply to catfishmen and buffalo fishermen too. Asian carp fishermen. That's not what we agreed to. That's We agreed to one thing and it gets explain to me how you, if, some, if somebody's fish for Asian carp how the does mesh, that look different to our wildlife enforcement they're, they're totally different they're floating style the mesh is different the six inch if you're fishing for cats you're using three inch if it's buffalo it's four inch uh, if it's the Asian carp it's anywhere from four to four and a half that's why you increased the set the mesh size to four and a half because the, the Asian carp are getting bigger uh, this here is going to a lot of this stuff we can pretty well work out, but if we throw that in the mix, you're going to have a whole other bunch that's going to be really upset over it. Can you respond to that, Bobby? Yeah, let me respond to that. Okay. Um, we, can, we can limit this to just paddlefish, the limit of nets on during paddlefish season. That would be more acceptable. Because if you don't, we, we don't need a whole lot more arguing than we you already got. Done. Yeah, but, but, you know, thank I, you. I appreciate you bringing it up, and I appreciate resolving the issue. Um, Okay, you got something you want to add? Yeah, uh, the, the fisherman wants me to bring something up. Okay. Yeah, this, ain't, uh, this is something I don't do if they're wanting me to, to talk <laughs> But anyway, it's the catfish. They're, they're wanting me to ask that you put that on the agenda. 
for next month. The 36 inch catfish. Am I am I understanding that they're going that the catfish are going out of state? Is that correct? That's what we've been. Yeah, that's there's evidence of that. Well, I've had fishermen come to me and say that we if we made it illegal for those fish to be took out of state live, that's what the that's what the problem is. Would would y'all be willing to give us the 36 inch fish uh, with one over? 36 if we made it illegal for any fish to be took across the state line live well, We won't be able to respond to that today, but that's something uh, that we can ask yeah. that we can take issue with okay Okay, they won't admit right. the fishermen wanted me to ask that All right. Okay. Appreciate there are asking. people that make a living sending catching smaller fish Spiddlers whatever on state lines that market those fish live over state line because I've already asked that question Okay, but what we're going to address that in the September meeting, correct? All right, we'd like to do that at and I uh, appreciate everybody's involvement, and uh, uh, it's been a lot of dialogue. And I want y'all to understand that we're private citizens that that give our time and take away from our jobs, and 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 sit up here and try to do what we think is best for y'all, for the resources, for the agency. So I don't want y'all to think in any way that we're not paying close attention to what you're telling us, okay? But I'm just saying, like you say, and like. The agent said, we, we have to base it on the information he's given us, and we take our time, and we're very serious about it. And I'm, we're not trying to cut anybody short or anything, but I think we've got the dialogue of what the gist of what y'all are unhappy with, and we'll see what we can do if we can adjust to it and adjust and, and, and still protect the resource, okay? So at this time, I'm going to turn it. One more question, and I'll have nothing, nothing I don't to believe it'll be one more. <laughs> yeah, one more. Uh, are you all going to vote on this yeah. next month? I guess there's a lot to do. It's going to happen between now and the next month for us to make that decision, okay? I mean, there's other things that are being a factor in that, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to turn this over to, with great pleasure, to Chairman Griggs. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd like to thank the Region 1 staff for taking care of us Absolutely. while we're here. We all know by statute that we have to meet in each grand division once a year, and this is our turn in West Tennessee, and I do thank Region 1 and everything that they did while we were here. Um, is there any other new business to come before the commission? I always ask that. I don't see any hands. Our next meeting will be... Uh, I, uh, Ed, I'm not even coming to you. Our next <laughs> meeting will be in Nashville. It'll be September 18th and 19th. You can nod your head. I think I'm correct on that. but. Appreciate everybody coming today. I hope you have a safe trip. I know some of my colleagues have a long way to go, and I hope they have a safe journey. But thank all y'all. We're adjourned.